Hi, welcome to the Gangsplainer. I'm Jeff the Gangsplainer and today I'm Gangsplaining Azul, Stained Glass of Sintra. Now last week I did the Gangsplanation for Azul. This is Azul the Stained Glass of Sintra. They are different games. They are not an expansion on each other. They are totally separate games. You may own one, you may own the other, you may own both, you may own neither. I think that's all the options. But they are different games using similar mechanisms. So the mechanism that is the same is this idea of a circle with four pieces on it and you can take one colored tile from the circles and push the rest into the middle and that whole way of playing is the same. What is different is what you're placing those pieces onto. So in this game we are taking stained glass pieces, so pieces of glass from the center circle. Uh, in the Azul, the original Azul, you're taking tiles or uh, trying to build up a tile motif. So the stained glass version is is relatively the same in that half of the game, but really different in this half of the game, what's in front of you, where you're placing them. You're sitting with the same rules of, of if you can't fit them onto one spot, then you've got to get rid of the rest and they fall down and are broken and you lose points for doing so. But I feel at the same time they have fixed up a couple of the little nuanced things that's a, a bit of a balance thing, I guess, where instead of just losing a point or two points depending on how much stuff has gone out, you actually move down a track which has needed points on it. And the further you move down that track, the more points you're losing. So if you're in the early stages, you're probably only losing one, one point at a time. But in the later stage, you're losing two or three, or like there's, there's this gap between the, the, the points. I can't remember exactly how many it is. If you get to the end of that and you still need to lose points, then you take those points off and you start again. And this way of playing, this this mechanism, it means that you can't do the thing that I found worked a little bit in the other version of Azul, of just taking that first player marker, which loses your point, so that you can, doing it so that you can have the first choice on which one to bring in next time. The problem with doing that is you end up so far down that track that you're actually losing a heap of points by taking that. Whereas in Azul, the original, you're only losing one point each time you do it. That slight change is actually really dramatic and changes how you think about the player order as you go and you're kind of always looking at oh, who's furthest down that, who's not furthest down that. Oh, okay, I've got a little bit of space I can afford to go for the first one if possible. So it feels like more of a negative to take from the middle. What that ends up doing is everyone kind of goes towards the outside circles first unless they really desperately need something in the middle. And so you're almost forced into a position where you have to take that tile first. What that also does is the, the tiles or pieces of stained glass that go into the middle are going to get dramatically larger than if you were to take them from the outside. Or in the original game, you're kind of, oh yeah, I can take that first player, that's great. Because you're losing so many points on it. And that little change is dramatic. It's a dramatic change on this game. The other thing that that we've got to notice is the way the game scores at the end. I've, I usually play the A side of the board. There's an A side and a B side and they score slightly differently in terms of their major scoring. I play the A side which is, and I've done the videos on the A side uh, alone, I believe the B side is you choose a colour of the tiles that you put down. So you complete a, a, a window, you bring one of the windows pieces down to the bottom. I believe the B-side is counting how many of what one of those window types and you get points for having that many. But on the A-side, there's little spots on your board. If you surround the spots with four window tiles, so um, you've managed to do each of the windows above it twice, then what's happening is you're going to get 10 points. If you've only managed to get three things around, you're getting six points, two things around, these are worth three points. So surrounding those, those spots is actually really important to the game. The other way that this scores really interestingly is it scores to the right, which means any window that you finished on the right hand side of that of the spot is going to score again. So you don't want to take the one on the left hand side, which is probably, I think it's four points, which is the most points you're going to get from any one window. But you don't want to take that guy until you've taken some of the guys on the right because you're going to get to score them again. 
And having that little nuance is actually really dramatic and kind of makes you suddenly start thinking about how to play it. And once again, there's another nuance that you've got a, a guy working on the windows and he can only move to his right, which means that once you've got kind of you see in the middle, you can't place any of the window pieces you're picking up behind him on his left. You can only place it below him or further to the right. It's going to take you an entire turn to move back to the left. So you end up thinking slightly differently than in the other at all of which way do I take these tiles that's going to help me to actually be able to place them that other people aren't necessarily going to take. It is a different game and everyone I've who's played both versions of the game who I've asked has actually said I don't know which one's better I just think this is a different game. While it still uses a similar mechanism, it is a different game. And that's really important and really a, a really good thing to kind of get your head around is the differentness of this game. So look, go ahead and watch my Gamesplanation and, and my gameplay and see what you think of it. Watch last week's uh, regular result to see how different they are, see how similar they are, to see which one you would prefer more. Please comment below, let me know if you have any different thoughts than what I have. If you have any games that you'd like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email at thegamesplaner at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplaner to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.